All right, everyone, so the first topic we'll be covering is we'll be talking about the general concept of search engine optimization, comparing and contrasting the two big ways to do this, the easy way and the hard way. Raise your hand if you want to do this the easy way. Okay, now take your hand and reach into your wallet and take your credit card out. <laughs> because the easy way is that you're going to pay to rank higher than your competitors. But the problem with that, of course, is that you're going to pay to rank higher than your competitors. So then your competitor could pay a little bit more than you, and now they're number one. And then you pay a little bit more, now you're number one. And then a third party comes in and they pay more than you, both, and now they're higher than you. So that's the concept of, uh, of PPC, pay-per-click, where the search engines basically sell position on the search results, where they sell keywords, and so any company can then pay the search engines some amount of money, how much, we'll see a little bit later, they can pay to be number one right there. I searched cat groomers, mobile cat grooming, number one, petgroomingsoutherncalifornia.com. They're number one. Technically, they're number one in the ads section, aren't they? But a lot of people that are not tech savvy don't know that that's an ad, don't care that that's an ad, and they'll click there. And they'll get, that website will get a lot more traffic. And you yourself might be savvy and ignore the ads because you might think, well, I, if it's an ad, they, they're cheating. I don't know. Or you may click on the sidebar where you see the, re the best result, but it's an ad. So those ones that are kind of getting a little bit more prominent placement, they've paid for that. How much? We can research that later. But probably, just to give you a figure, let's say five cents per click. That's the PPC, pay per click. These companies paid Google, let's say, $100. They have a pool of $100. And then they're going to get ranked. And when someone clicks on their result, then five cents is deducted from their pool. And then uh, when the pool runs out, someone that paid a little bit more now is number one. So it's a constant moving target of paying and paying and paying to be number one. Perhaps that's why if you've previously had good results, you hired a company and you were number one for a while, and then maybe your contract ended, ended with them, you didn't renew it, maybe now you're not number one anymore. Perhaps a technique that was being done in your behalf was pay per click. You were paying a company to improve your SEO, and then they were using the money to do pay per click ads or other sort of monetary methods. And when you stop paying, then look slowly or quickly, you'll fall from the results because you're no longer paying to play. That's the easy way. Pay per click. Pay for placement. And yeah, a lot of you might just ignore the ads and go straight to the organic results. Right here, pet grooming, dogs and cats, over at PetSmart. Another PetSmart result. A Yelp result. Another Yelp result. Question. Do you have to pay to be in that area above what you were just pointing to, where it says not? Yeah, that area. With the stars? Do you pay for that specific, or is it because somebody wants to do it? Oh, I'm sorry. This area that you pay, this is not a paid area, no. But not everyone can get there unless you follow a couple of requirements, which I'll talk about. So I would like to be, I would like my company to be in this section, definitely. And we'll talk about how to get into that section. But this is the section, this is what is known as the organic search results, meaning the non-paid results. We'll talk about that. But that's the hard way. That's the hard way how to get there without paying. It takes more effort and more time to set up, but that's what I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach the hard way. Uh, and the reason for that is because that creates a better foundation for you to get high results and to continue to be ranked highly. 
if you pay to be ranked highly, that'll work for a while until you stop paying or you decrease your budget and so forth. If you take the longer way to rank, it'll be better for you in the long run. But it is harder because look at this, the number one result is a big corporation, PetSmart. And then another top result is Yelp. And then another result is Yelp. And then finally, perhaps a local company, FurryFriendSanDiego.com. They didn't appear until technically number one, two, th three, four, five. They were the fifth result on their website, although notice they did get a result up here from Yelp. And that's an aspect of SEM. Didn't I say a moment ago, SEO are things that you do on your website. SEM is what you do outside of your website. Furry Friends has a Yelp profile, and their Yelp profile is ranking higher than their own website. So it's not just about what are you doing on your website, what else are you doing outside of your website. Do you have a Yelp profile? Raise your hand if you know your company has a Yelp profile. If you didn't raise your hand, you probably ha have one and don't know about it. So we'll be talking about that. So this is a search engine result, and then you can do it the easy way, or you can do it the hard way. We'll be talking about the hard way, but it is better in the long term. Um, the, the big search engine, of course, is the one I'm currently using, which is which one? Google. Google. I'm over on Google. I did a search. I found some results. We're going to be looking at optimizing for Google and also optimizing for the second most popular search engine, Bing, Bing.com. And so Bing has about 20% market share. You say, well, why would I bother with 20% if I can go with Google? Everyone knows Google. Google's so big. It's a verb. People say, Google it, when that means, you know, search for it online. Google was not the first engine. Uh, was not the first search engine. Uh, there were older ones like uh, Yahoo and Alta Vista and so forth. But Google has ascended to be the number one global search engine with about 60% market share. Whereas Bing has about 20, and then the others have some spot in between. And Google, uh, Bing has actually been increasing market share, and Google has been decreasing market share. Now, 60 and 20 is still a big disparity disparity. But that's 20% of global traffic, which is hundreds of millions, probably billions of searches globally. So it behooves us to also optimize and follow the rules of Bing. So let's do an activity here. If you have not done so yet, open your web browser. Open any web browser you, you have available here. We have all the big ones. And then let's go to google.com. We've all probably heard of Google. Let's go to google.com. We get the search box here. Let's do this. Let's search for your name. Search for your name however you are commonly known or how you want to be learn, uh, known. So if your full name is William uh, Jefferson Clinton the third search yourself for Bill Clinton that's how you're known right so I'm gonna search myself Victor Campos search yourself on Google you get a you get a SERP here search engine results page you get a page of results 10 of them you get perhaps some images perhaps a sidebar with extra related information and then probably at the bottom you get related searches more page results and at the top here it tells me 28 million results appeared in half a second so as you search your name here raise your hand if any of these results are you okay raise your hand if something appeared here that you didn't expect Okay, so the biggest search engine has some content or found some content about you online. As I browse this, well, none of these pictures at the top are me. 
this little call out on the side is not me. I was not born in 1935. Uh, I am not living in New York City. This first result is also not me. I'm not an actor. I was not in the movie Scarface. <laughs> <laughs> maybe as a background extra in the baby scene. Um, but the second result is me. There's my LinkedIn profile. The third result is not me. That's not my Facebook. The fourth result is me. That's my, that's my personal website. The next result is also me. And no, so, is, so is the next one there. The, my profiles over at ratemyprofessor.com. Have you heard of that site, RateMyProfessor.com? There are websites to rate everything. Yelp started it, right? Rate this restaurant, and then it was Rate this nail salon, and then Rate this dog walker. Well, now they've got Rate My Professor, which is you can look up instructors here in various colleges, uh, because let's say you want to take an English class and there's seven to choose from. Uh, look up an instructor there and find out the one that's mean with a lot of homework and don't take her class. So here, these are my results, and as I scroll down, what else? Uh, there's my page over at Southwestern College, which actually they're going to take down soon because they're going to retire the server. And then there's another result there with my Google Plus profile, and there's another one with my profile from brandyourself.com. Make a note that you need to find out and claim your profile at brandyourself.com. Brand Yourself is a reputation management site. This is a site where you upload your content, your links, you're putting the best foot forward, your best foot forward, so that your information, the best information that you want to provide to the world is found here. So that not some sort of embarrassing thing that you don't want people to know about shows up, Instead, the stuff, the positive stuff that you want to display online shows up. Notice it looks like eight or nine of the top ten results are my personal things. And then it says, perhaps you mean Victor Campos West Wing, the actor, their Facebook, Dr. Victor Campos, DJ Victor Campos, etc. So here I'm showing you possibly the breadth of results that a search engine might have about you. You may not think there's much about you online, but if you participate in social media, if you have maybe a profile on your high school's reunion page, it was found, that embarrassing high school picture might show up. Mine does. Don't look for it, but mine does. <laughs> and um, you might have more stuff here that you didn't expect to find. And this is from a Google search. Question? At some point, maybe you're talking about how to like, undo things that are on here that you do not want to. I'll be touching upon that. <laughs> I'll be touching upon that, and that's becoming more of, an, more of an issue. So much so that actually in Europe, They've enacted laws, uh, this is the right to be forgotten law, where European citizens have more ability to tell Google, take me off of your results, and, they are, and Google has to comply. That has not been implemented in the US yet. Uh, but one of the best ways to try to deal with that is to counteract that with more positive results. Like I say, get your profile, your free profile, at brandyourself.com to help counteract the negative things. So let's compare these results with the other big search engine, the number two search engine. I'm going to open a different web browser. I'm going to go, I was in Google Chrome. I'm going to go to Firefox, just any other web browser. And this time we'll go to the other big search engine, bing.com, B-I-N-G.com. Let's go to bing.com. Bing was invented a little bit later than um, Google. It's a search engine. It's trying to do the same thing that um, it's trying to do the same thing that Bing uh, that Google does, but a little different. Notice their home page is a little more colorful and it has a background graphic and news. 
uh, news articles and so forth, but it's still a search engine. It's still browsing the global internet, the global web, and trying to pull up results. Let's do the same search in Bing. Search for your name the same way. <coughs> and we'll compare that. So we'll write Bing.com, also search your name. Richard. Yes. These photographs that appear might be coming from places that you might have uploaded your photo to. For example, maybe Facebook, if you use Twitter, maybe you have your picture on your company profile site, maybe you're, there's a picture on your, on your company's website, on your high school's website. Um, we will be able to see that if you click on the picture, it, will, it should then show you at the bottom where is it coming from. Mine's coming from LinkedIn. So try clicking the picture and see where what site it's coming from. I've got frat guys in an underwear right next to my picture. But that's not you, is it? But it, but it's not you. It might be another person with your name. <laughs> I have a very unique name, sir. I tell that. Hmm. Well, it's disturbing. If I look here on my results. There's my picture, and I'm next to some kid right here also, and some yeah. guys over here. So you cannot really control that. Other people have, might have your name, even if it's very unique. If it's not your own picture in a frat in your underwear, then I wouldn't worry about it, because that's someone, someone else, even though it does look unsavory. So if you searched in Bing, how many results, did you find any results here that are different from Google? Raise your hand. OK. Both search engines are browsing the same internet, the same web, but they're, each one claims to find better results than the other. Each one has an algorithm, a technique for finding what it thinks are better results. They're in competition. Google and Bing are in competition. And from the statistics, it seems to be that Bing is ascending. Bing is gaining more market share. Google is losing some, and also the other ones are losing some, like Yahoo and, and uh, AOL search and so forth, and Bing is increasing. I'll explain why in a moment. But I'm going to look at my results here. So the number one result, first of all, the page looks a little bit different than Google. Google's had some pictures right at the top, whereas on Bing it's a little bit lower. It's got a call-out box on the right side that in my case is even more detailed for the actor. So that actor was also in the movie Juice and the Master Gunfighter and Moving Violations. And that information is being pulled from the Internet Movie Database. The first result here is from Internet Movie Database. That's not me. Second is Facebook. That's not me. This has pictures. And here in the pictures, my picture shows up from my LinkedIn profile. Another Facebook that is not me, some stuff of Rotten Tomatoes that is not me, and then my Rate My Professors page, Southwestern College, that is me. Related results, LinkedIn profile, that's my LinkedIn profile, that is me. And then a really bad review on a doctor, Victor Campos, that's not me. Photos, phone, email, and address from Spokio.com. This is one of these kinds of sites that's like a a yellow pages kind of site that is just going to list a lot of, a lot of other Victor Campuses. There's my Google Plus profile social network result. There is the politician that's trying to get elected in Texas. That's not me. Uh, there's the attorney in Brentwood, New York. That is not me. So some results are different. Uh, uh, there's there's more of a range of victors in, in the Bing results, whereas in Google it was almost all me. This says it pulled up 4 million results, whereas Google pulled up 28 million. And that doesn't really mean that there's less results, it just means that these are the 4 million most relevant, whereas Google says, well, here's 28 million of them. So Bing is trying to differentiate itself from Google by trying to be perhaps more specific. But they're both giving page a page of results. 
So that's why we're going to be talking about both Google and Bing because they're both relevant search engines. Question? Um, I found more uh, specific results to me on Bing. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, what is it they're looking for, the difference between the two uh, search engines in, uh, in terms of specificity? Well, that's the algorithm. That's the proprietary trade secret method that each search engine uses to determine the best results. So when we set up our webmaster tools, we will get a whole big book of documentation that tells us, do this, don't do that. We recommend this, we don't recommend that. So the search engines will tell us recommendations and do's and don'ts. But still, some of the algorithm is a trade secret. They don't want the competitor to know their secret. So some of that stuff is a little bit more conjecture, and um, as long as we try to adhere as best as possible to their recommendations, then we should be able to fall in line and rank better. Now, perhaps if you take a, another class or read a book, oftentimes they are focusing on Google because Google is the larger search engine, but I'm going to be talking about both. And I'm going to be talking about Bing because Bing is increasing market share. Now, uh, how many of you have a smartphone? How many of you have an iPhone or iPad or an Apple smartphone? Okay, so Apple had a partnership with Google to display Google search results built into their iPhones. So since 2007 to about 2012, I think, uh, Apple had a contract with Google. And whenever you did a search, the results were a Google result. Then eventually their contract ended, and Apple and Google are kind of parting ways. If you've had an iPhone for a while, you might remember how great Google Maps were and how not so great Apple Maps are. So they've broken down their relationship. And instead, Apple has started to have more of a relationship with Microsoft. And Microsoft is behind Bing. So now, with the latest iOS 7 and 8 and 9 that's coming, uh, the, base, the default res search result will come from Bing. So Apple users are going to see more Bing results than Google results. On the Mac desktop, uh, on an iMac or, or MacBook as well, you're going to see more Bing results because again, Apple is moving away from Google and moving toward Microsoft, moving toward Bing. So more Apple users are going to see results coming from Bing. So it behooves us to optimize and be found on Bing if we're going to have that market share, which is a large market share. Um, does anyone have a, a Windows computer at home? Uh, did any of you buy that within the last three years? Is anyone in the market to buy one within the next five years, a new computer? All right, is that going to be a Windows computer? If it is, that's going to come built in with Bing search because Microsoft comes from, uh, Windows comes from Microsoft and Bing comes from Microsoft. So if you have a brand new computer with Windows 8 that has Bing search built in, you can change it, of course, to Google. Even if you're on the iPhone, I don't like Bing, I'm gonna change back to Google, no problem, you can do that but it's going to come built in. It's, it already comes built in. So new computers with Windows 8, and then when the new version comes out in the summer, have Bing built in. That's why we want to also optimize for Bing. You might never have heard of Bing until today. You might have heard of Bing today, but didn't use it until today. But 20% of the world has heard of Bing and uses it to some degree. And it's only 20%, but I'm, it's safe to say that's like a billion searches per day. And of course, it's a hundred billion for Google, but still a billion is a billion. Let's uh, go back to Google, and this time, let's do a search for your company name. Not the website, but the name of your company. Mine is PMD Interactive, so that's what I'll search and I'll search for it in the way that I want people to know about it. So I won't do a I won't do any keywords yet. Search the name of your company on Google. And then exactly the same way, search for your company name on Bing to compare and contrast.
let's see, my Google results. The top result is my website. Then I'm done, right? People will find my website, I'm number one. Obviously, this is a trick question, this is a false search, because if a person knew my company's name, obviously they would find it. They actually would be searching more for web designers or marketing companies. That's the harder part. We'll get to that. What I'm trying to show you here is this is what the search engines know about your company. Maybe what you didn't know about your company. So as I search here, the number one result is my company's website and it shows that it was last updated June 5th. One note that you want to make is search engines value results that are newer. So if your website has not been updated recently, that might be hurting you. How recently? Well, if you have not updated your website in a year, that's not good. If you haven't updated it in a quarter, you're getting warmer. If you've updated it in the last month, better. If you've updated it in the last week or day, even better. But you see, how can I update my website every day? I'll get to that. The point is you want to have a, an updated website. And we'll get into the specifics, of course. What if you're still going to update? But have you updated it recently? Yeah, yeah. Have you updated it with blog content? Not blog. Okay, that's one of the possible reasons why there's no date. But it's still, even if it doesn't show a date, it's still keeping it's still taking that into account, although it will take blogging more into account. And we'll, and we'll discuss that as we go on. The second result is our Facebook page. The third result is our Yelp profile, and then LinkedIn, and Twitter, and a YouTube video of ours, and one of our apps, and our Google Plus social media, and our Pinterest social media, and our Clout social media. So this is pulling up 396,000 results, not just our website, but everything outside of our website. Because it's not just anymore, do you have a website? That was the basic question, that was the number one question a few years ago, now it's assumed. If you don't have a website, you're a little behind. But I'm not saying go rush and make your website. Take the class, learn some more, and then deal with it. But the website is the basic nowadays. What's necessary above that is the uh, is what else is on is outside of uh, in addition to your website, your social media, your Facebook, your Yelp, your LinkedIn. Do you have any videos? All of that extra stuff. That's the SEM, search engine marketing. I'm going to compare that briefly with Bing. Bing has my site as number one also, but notice this. Bing has deep links. Bing also has links from within my website, not just the top home page like Google. Bing is showing here our profile synopsis or our, our page synopsis. Web marketers who can create the right solution for the right price. We offer everything from social media to human resources and then directly linked over to our portfolio, request a quote, etc. I want that. Google isn't giving it, but Bing is. We'll talk about setting that up. Question. Yes? Sometimes Google does have that information. As, as we'll see when we set up our, our Google Webmaster Tools uh, in their Basically, it'll say, we determine that based on your content and how organized it is and so forth. You can't really request it, but if you set up your site via their recommendations, you are more prone to have that kind of result. Question? Yes? So I thought that result in Google for my website, but mm -hmm. not in mm -hmm. Well, again, each one is trying to show you what it thinks is the best result, and either or, whatever place you get, that kind of deep link result is good, uh, but because perhaps you've never really considered Bing, that's why you, you might not get it there, because maybe there's some rule you haven't quite followed. So both of them show my Facebook profile, my company's Facebook, but Bing shows my company's Facebook plus the rating that people have, have, have given it there. 
you can you can give ratings for companies on Facebook as well. It shows there. And then both show the Yelp profile. Both show the Twitter profile, but Bing also shows some stats like the followers, follower count. Both show Google Plus or videos and YouTube. Notice the YouTube video that we have is it actually kind of embedded in the results. YouTube is another Google property, so that's why they are favoring to show the video there, whereas Bing is not. Bing shows, here's, the, here's their YouTube page, but it doesn't show the video. Clout.com is another website you might want to research about to manage your online presence or track your efficacy with your online endeavors. So I'll have these in some notes, but I said already brandyourself.com. You create a free profile there to manage your identity. And then also clout.com to manage and track your clout online. Both of these show up on my results here. K-L-O-U-T, clout. So we'll take a break in just a moment, but we'll do one more search. This again, as I said, is an artificial search. Uh, I'm searching for my company name as I expect my company name to be used. But if a person is looking for an e-commerce, a website that will set up my, I mean a company that will set up my website to sell products, I'm, not, I'm never going to think about searching for something called PMB Interactive. I'm going to search for these keywords or phrases um, that of a products or services I'm trying to sell. So um, because search engine optimization is a moving target, we're going to search for keywords in two different ways. One is the traditional basic keyword, and then after the break, we'll then talk about the long tail keywords. So what I mean here is, let's do a very basic search on both search engines for one keyword, it could be one word or two words, a keyword about what your company is about. My company is about web design, so I'm going to search very basically for web design. Don't take any of the suggestions. Don't be very specific yet. Just search web design on both search engines or whatever your company is about. If you're a bakery, search for bakeries. So search for that basic keyword. Both of them are going to give you lots of results. What number is this here? 1.6 billion results. So a lot of results. And Bing is also showing 1.4 billion results. So in the old days, we would we would talk of, we would figure out our, our website's keywords and we would apply the keywords to our site in a variety of ways. And then people would search that keyword and we might be found. But I'm not being found at all for this. That's because I'm trying to vie for position with 1.6 billion other websites that are using that keyword, that basic keyword. And the results page shows a bunch of ads. So obviously website builder top10.com is the best website for me to, to, to hire, right? Well, they've paid the most to be number one, but that might not be the best. I see over here, Irvine OC Web Design, they do it for $149. That sounds good. That's probably the best result, right? Well, no, they perhaps they have also paid for that. Once I skip the ads, once I go past the ads, I see jacobtyler.com, top web design and San Diego branding agency. And then I see an article on Wikipedia I see these that have been called out as local examples. So even though I didn't type any local keywords, the search engines nowadays are smart enough to know a general location where you're at. And as I go past further there, then I've got B2B marketing firm, San Diego website design. 
then I've got a Yelp result, dogandrooster.com, a Craigslist result, and then webdesign.org, web design tutorials. So there's a very limited amount of spaces here, 10 slots. And it looks like really only one or two or three would be results that are number one, organic, they didn't pay for it, and number two, of a real company. What is also appearing are Yelp results, a Wikipedia article, thank you, now I know about web design, but I didn't hire someone. Um, a Craigslist ad that someone posted. So you have a very small space to be um, to rank in such a competitive field with that keyword. Comparing Bing. Of course, we've got ads again and related searches. Top 10 web design, best free web design sites. Website builder dot ten. Web design. Web, website builder top 10 dot com. And over here, website builder top 10. Huh? They paid to be number one on both search engines. Then over at web.com, another ad, custom website design, and they've got Call Us right now on Yelp. Past the paid results, we have OP Web Design, South Park San Diego Small Business Web Designer, San Diego Web Design.com. Then we've got San Diego Web Design, SWS Support.com, Website Service for All.com. There's Web Design.org again. There's the Wikipedia article again. There's GoDaddy, the biggest company that sells web uh, web services. Um, they've taken up a slot, and then you go on to the rest of the results. So this was this is an example of using a very generic keyword that is not going to be beneficial to you. After our break, we're going to talk about the long tail keyword strategy and how that could be more helpful for you to be found. You're going to be a needle in a haystack with certain keywords or certain concepts. So let's take our first break. It's 10.45. We'll take a 10-minute break. When we come back at 10.55, we'll talk about the long-tail keyword strategy.